to Holy Family Parish on this 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. There will be a second collection today for the Archdiocese for the Military Services USA. Your support of this collection will bring the gospel, the sacraments, and other forms of spiritual support to men and women who serve our country and defend our freedoms, including members serving from our own parish. Thank you for your generosity. There is a display in a narthex dedicated to the brave men and women who have served and are serving our nation. Please take home a toy soldier from the display and place it somewhere that will remind you to pray for men and women serving our country. Rip purchases can be made at the school during the church shutdown this week. The prophet Malachi sets the tone for today's readings with his warning that one day the Lord will destroy all evildoers. Paul addresses the problem that some people anticipating the end of the world have stopped working and have become a burden. Jesus speaks of the prosecution that awaits, but all three also give hope to those who are faithful, assuring them that they will not be harmed. As we listen to today's readings, let us consider how we can work to increase the number of those who will receive the sun's healing rays. Our opening hymn is number 850, All Are Welcome. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, Rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall in divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true, where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and the symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of Justice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus. You are the everlasting sign of peace and reconciliation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to salvation for the just. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify. 
magnify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, they will arise, the son of justice, with its healing rays. The word of the Lord. The Lord grew the earth with justice. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Let the sea and what fills it resound, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, the mountains shout for them for joy. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. 
He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with equity. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we do not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day we work, so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right. Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you, so that you might imitate us. In fact, when you were, we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way, by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Stand erect and raise your hands, because your redemption is at hand. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, all that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. I will lead you to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you the wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord.
Our secular world is gearing up for the hectic holiday shopping season, but our scriptures are gearing up for cosmic conflict and death. On the second to last weekend before the new liturgical year, people might be expecting some advanced preparation for the Advent or Christmas seasons from the scriptures. Instead, they get lessons about global warfare, plagues, confrontation, betrayal, persecution, and endurance and salvation. Well, maybe the scriptures aren't so out of sync with our lives after all. Today's gospel is full of chaos and turmoil. In it, the disciples asked Jesus this question. What sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? Because of this question, we might imagine that Jesus' response is about describing some future event, something that is to happen at the end of the world. But when we listen to what he says, it sounds all too familiar. Jesus describes a world in which there are wars and insurrections, where one nation is pitted against another, natural disasters, and where families are divided one against another. Jesus is not describing some future world, but the world in which we live. This particular gospel message allows us to apply Jesus' word to the occasions in our life when we experience turmoil. We have all had times in our lives when we believe our worlds are coming to an end. They are usually times of high stress and intensity, huge disappointment, great upset, and despair. They can sometimes be caused by our own decision, actions or inaction, family members or friends, or even world events. Some of us here might be facing turmoil in our families, the turmoil of divorce or misunderstanding or sickness, job loss, or the rising costs of food and utilities and a myriad of other things. We wonder, what will happen? Can the divisions among us be healed? Will my life ever become normal again? Whatever our circumstances, whatever ways it is that we might be facing turmoil in our lives, Jesus' words are helpful because he tells us to do three things when our life is in chaos. The first thing he says is, do not be terrified. Do not be deceived. When our life is in turmoil, it is important to use our heads. It is important to test the truth. Test what is true before you react. When our families are divided, people are quick to give advice about what we should do. They say, don't talk to her or tell him this. Do not be deceived. All advice is not wisdom. Certain choices can make things worse. Test what is true before we decide to act. See Christ in others and recognize the Christ in yourself. The second thing Jesus tells us is, do not be terrified. When our life is in turmoil, it is easy to be afraid. But we are people of faith. We believe that in every circumstance, God still loves us, and God is acting for us. It is important to believe that God always has a plan, as in some way working through the events of our life, and our world to bring God's kingdom. In faith, it is possible to replace fear with hope. Quite simply and quite beautifully, both our faith and our scriptures tell us that in these times of chaos and turmoil, Christ is near, Christ is present. We believe as followers of Christ that he is always with us, both in the good times and the really tough times of our lives. Our task is not to look to him. Our task is to look to him, to persevere, and to not lose hope. And when we find him, we show others and help them in their distress to see Christ present in their lives. When we gather Sunday after Sunday for Eucharist, 
Each of us comes with a different story or a different part of our story of life, whether it's the high moments, the low moments, or the in-between moments. And while we may all be at different places, we all share one bread and one cup. It's significant that the actions before we eat and drink are that we break and pour. For our faith tells us that when our lives are broken open, when they are broken and they feel like they are poured out with nothing left, that's the moment of grace, to experience Christ in a deeper and wider way. The third thing that Jesus tells us is that we should testify. When our life is in turmoil, it is especially important to witness to the gospel truth. We are called to speak out, not out of anger or selfishness, but for justice and service. To speak out for those who have no voice. To speak out for the life in the mother's womb. To speak out for the undocumented immigrant who is trying to keep his or her family together. We should speak out for our fellow citizens who cannot find good jobs or for every person who is in need of adequate health care. In our families, when we experience division, it is always important to speak out of what will heal rather than what will further divide, to promote peaceful discussion and understanding, and to testify to Jesus' teaching of mercy and forgiveness. When our lives move out of balance, it is easy to panic. That is why Jesus tells us three things that are important in our times of turmoil. First, do not be deceived. Test what is true. Second, do not be terrified. God is still with us. And third, witness to the truth of the gospel, especially speaking out for uh, those who have no voice. These three directives allow us to find a path through troubled water. If we embrace them, we can also claim the promise that Jesus makes at the end of today's gospel. He says, by your perseverance, you will secure your life. We are the disciples of Jesus Christ, so let us publicly profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Each of us recognizes God's love for us, and in that love let us turn to him with our prayers and our petitions. For the church. May her members receive renewed strength in God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for leaders of nations. May they work together to see that peace and justice reign throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work in disaster relief, that they may always realize the good that they do in bringing aid and hope to people in their greatest need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing an end of their world, that they may know God's comforting presence this day and be strengthened by God's Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our veterans and, fa- and their families, and all those in active duty, that the Lord may protect them and grant them health and stability, and may we honor and remember their sacrifices. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those being baptized, especially Hannah Grace Messenbrink, May she continue to grow in faith through the fountain of new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, will shine with healing rays on those who have died, especially Jerry Rice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God in heaven, we come before you with these and all of our prayers. Grant them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please join in singing number 751, The Servant Song, number 751. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the Lord. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and to gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have restored to those gifts of yours that... By sinning we lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying... Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Amen, amen, amen. against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ can say for you. Please join in singing number 641, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number, number 641. Love Divine, 